an amazing muralist and graffiti artist. And uh, you know, we have been you know, blessed to have his help and his knowledge and his experience. You know, we have Kathy here, we have to Little Tokyo here, you know, we have Norma and Joe, Nella, Orkiza, we have everybody, Sal, we have everybody, David, Rocio, we have, you know, our Nella gear provider here, Com you know, compliments <laughs> of Gabriel. You. So, you know, we're a very close-knit community and we really love our community and we just want to show that. We want to show that we love our murals our murals are in sold images for us. We grow up with our with our murals and, and we grow up and and look at them like we look at a little brother or a sister. We see them be created, we see them nurture, the, we see the artist nurture them, we, we see that we see them grow. And then all of a sudden they become a part of us. And that is why it hurts when we see our murals erased. And it's been happening a lot in Highland Park. And it's extremely disheartening and it's, it's hurtful. And when, and, when, and when it hurts like that, our community is disrupted and our well-being as a community is disrupted. But not only that, it's, it's synonymous, right, with what we see is happening with our immigrant population, right? With our, with our migrant farm workers that are still yet not respected and are still out there in in you know basically slavery right so we we are we need to stand up and empower each other and our community because our art is 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 alive and and we have to struggle for that we have to keep in mind that these images cannot be erased. They have to be saved. And more, far more sinister is erasing a beloved image of our migrant farm workers and a, a mural funded by the Cesar Chavez Foundation uh, and have it erased on National Hispanic Heritage Month. So uh, they claim that this, that this uh, mural had um, graffiti on it and, and tagging, and that wasn't the case. Um, we have confirmed that with our parents, with our children, with our neighbors. Uh, we have seen that this is a lie and there was no tagging. And regardless if there's tagging on a mural, that is not the procedure or the protocol. The protocol is to contact your local DCA or your local uh, maybe community leaders um, or your local artists. Jeez, just contact the artist under the Visual Artist Rights Act. It's a federal law that protects our visual art that says we need to give the artist a 90 day notice before any alteration or elimination. But we also are given state protections by the California Art Protection Act that was established in 1979. So this is something that we have to recognize and teach our communities because our art is disappearing. We have Little Tokyo here who also experienced this whitewashing. You know, we have other communities, Filipino town, that's also experiencing this. You know, we have all our neighboring communities that we love so much that are experiencing this, that, that are experiencing this whitewashing. So we have to exercise our rights. We have to exercise our federal rights. We have to exercise our state rights. We have to fe fe exercise our local rights. But if local, locally, if our rights are being violated, then we need to empower our community and come together and do exactly what we're doing here. And we have to speak up. And today I'm going to read, as soon as we walk down to the front where the mural site is, I'm going to share with you a letter that I received from Paul Chavez, the son of of my my idol, <laughs> Cesar Chavez, right? Um, I'm gonna try not to cry because <laughs> it's a beautiful letter and it's also regarding how important our visual imagery is and how sacred it is to us and how it represents our struggles, our battles, our victories. And that's exactly what our children here need to see because we're still here. Highland Park is still predominantly Latino. I'm sorry, New York and LA Times. We are still here. Don't believe the lies that you hear 
on the New York Times articles and the LA Times. You know, I promoted this story to a lot of local newspapers, including Eastsider and Boulevard Sentinel. Nobody replied. You know, everyone wants to buy into the lie. But this is a testament to the power of community and why we are here today. This is, this is, art is powerful. So let's exercise our rights and defend our art and our community. So please walk with me to the mural site. That way we can, uh, you know, we can memorialize it and mourn a little bit for it. Thank you. I'm gonna stay here just in case. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but you need to speak, Sorry. so you need yeah. to. Okay. Yeah. We're gonna light the candles over there. Yeah. ridiculous because because the LAUSD is publicly funded and it's not a private entity and only private entities are are exempt from mural ordinance which is, means mural law so LAUSD apparently is exempt from registering their art but it doesn't matter because there's federal protections and there's state protections to at least give the artist a 90 day notice before you eliminate so it is a violation of not only his federal artistic rights, but of his state artistic rights. Okay. Yeah. Good to know. Yes. Good to know. And not a lot of people know. Right. So this is why we have to talk about it. Yeah. You know, we have to we have to exercise our rights and we have to, you know, do it. We have to do this. Right. You know? And protect others too. Yeah. Right. You know if they're negotiating with Cervantes to restore it? Well, I just I'm also going to announce that, you know, there was a representative from Jackie Goldberg here, um, who said that they have nothing to do with the erasure, right. and that they're leaving it between the principal and the artist. So that's good, because now we see an easier resolution, and so I told the representative, we want our mural back. Plain and simple, it's an easy solution. I said our community is hurt, we have been, you know, we, we, our hearts are broken, we will not stand for this. We want our mural back. And we want our migrant farm workers respected and, and as well as Cesar Chavez and his foundation. You know, um, they, so they, they were connected to that mural. They funded okay. that mural. Okay. Yes. And as as well as the Hathaway Sycamores. Mm -hmm. The Hathaway Sycamores is is a foster care that's been here forever mm -hmm. in, in you know on 64. Right. And uh, uh, LA's best after school program. So uh, those three were, were the, the, spot, the who funded uh, Daniel Cervantes' mural. So we're, you know, we, we're, doing, we're doing good. We're, you know, we, we're making progress. Right. How, long, how long was the mural up? Since 2004. Yeah. Wow, that's a long time. That's a long time. Exactly. Exactly. And so uh, it's, it's a sacrilegious act. Right. Right. Of you know? And it surpasses the grandfathered uh, date for the DCA. If it, if it was grandfathered and they find the archives, any mural that was created 
after or before, sorry, before October 12, 2013 is considered grandfathered in. Yeah. So we're walking up to the wall that you guys see. That's the wall that was whitewashed right in front. How big was the mural? The mural that, that it was all of the wall right there that you That whole white wall? That whole white wall. Because even when, even like when my, when my daughter was in elementary school, and it was the voting poll, and so people are out there with their agenda, like to put stuff on the field, they said, you can do that, we have to be 100 yards from the entrance. So, yeah. So then, Yes. Yes. Here, as you can see, all along this way, 
It was a Daniel Cervantes mural, and this mural was uh, funded by the Cesar Chavez Foundation, as well as Hathaway Sycamores, and as well as LA's Best After School Program. And it was funded in 2004. Um, and uh, we have seen it and grown up with this hero since, you know, 15, what, 15 years ago. So, you know, like I was saying before, our murals are in soul images. They're our family. So we cannot erase our murals, especially if they were funded by the likes of a foundation established by Cesar Chavez, which in my book, you know, is one of my idols. And I always try to do exactly as he does. Is, you know, our, our struggles are peaceful. Our protests are peaceful. We're not here to condone violence. We're here to stand up for our community and to show our love for our murals and for our artists like Daniel Cervantes, like Zender here. We have Zender who, if I don't know you remember, his mural was erased in, uh, in 2014. Uh, and it, you know, mysteriously at night, it just disappeared, you know, right behind the Highland Park Bowl. So we're seeing the whitewashing of our culture and our cultural, our, our, our artistic uh, culture. So we, we can't have this happen. We have protection again. Our art is protected on the federal level, but nobody knows, right? So we have these wonderful federal laws in place called the Visual Artist Rights Act that protect our art on, 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 the, on, on the very tough level. We also have our blood to have protections on the state level which is the California Art Preservation Act of 1979. The problem is, how are we going to exercise our rights if we don't know they exist, right? So we are here to commemorate our beautiful mural that, that has been lost. No community input, nothing was given, no notice to the artist, which is required by federal and state law 90 days in advance. A, a notice 90 days in advance whether the art was registered or not. So here we see a lot of uh, the whitewashing of our art and our culture. You know, we all know that Highland Park is ground zero for gentrification. So we see that these atrocities and these offensive attacks against our families, against this massive displacement. Right now we have 200 kids that are homeless and families that are in LAUSD, but no one's helping them. Why? Because we are. We, we establish as a community NELAS for families or, or is, is it, is, it's, and for students, right? So we have our community uh, you know, donating stuff because we are in peril. And then we see these fake articles like the New York Times, you know, pr promoting gentrification and, and more so uh, amputating our legacy Latino businesses, right? We see this amputation, this, this cutting off of circulation. So together, we have to stand up. We have my friend here, Joe, who grew up here and was extremely disheartened by this erasure because he used to pass by as a child with his with his father um, as a teen, and he, and they used to spark up an imad in, in a beautiful conversation about the Bracero program, about how his family came here, you know, as migrant farm workers, and a lot of us have that that history. So we are, we are here today to spread the word and to say we demand our mural back. Our kids have every right to see their history, their struggles, and their, 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 their victories, and their, their idols, their leaders, people who have been made, who have made deep sacrifices for our rights. So I was happy to have, so to get a letter of support from the Cesar Chavez Foundation. And he wanted me, uh, they wanted me to share this letter 
with you guys today. And uh, he wanted me, um, and when I say he, um, the letter was written by uh, Paul, uh, Chavez's son, Paul Chavez. And so we're deeply honored, you know, to have this support from Cesar Chavez's son himself. And so I'm going to read this letter, which I'm really proud of. And I'm, gonna, I'm going to try. I'm going to try not to cry <laughs> Be because uh, you know it's a very beautiful letter. So um, here, if, if can you can you hold this for me? Well, well, thank you so much. So okay. So we have uh, this addressed uh, to restorative justice for the arts, and basically uh, he's, he the letter reads. Dear brothers and sisters, we at the Cesar Chavez Foundation were dismayed and saddened to learn about the whitewashing of a much beloved local mural at Garbanza Elementary School in Highland Park the, called the Migrant Farm Workers by Daniel Cervantes. We were even more dis we were even more disheartened that when we when we I'm sorry we were more disheartened this is a very very letter sorry hold on one second let me get the original because this is a very this is a very very letter and I want to make sure that we we read we, that this is read the right way okay so it says here. We were even more disappointed when we were informed the whitewashing occurred with, with little or no community input during National Hispanic Heritage Month. Some 15 years ago, we, the Cesar Chavez Foundation, commissioned the, the piece because it linked people to its, in our urban communities with their history in the fields. The piece was a constant reminder of the daily sacrifices made by men, women, and children who feed us all. The piece also reflected the legacy of empowerment my father and the, the, the farm workers movement inspired by millions of Latinos and people from all walks of life. Public art connects the past, present, and future. Its importance today is official given the hostile times we live in. Therefore, we support and encourage the restoration of the Migrant Farm Workers Mural by Daniel Cervantes. Si se puede by Paul F. Chavez, president of the Cesar Chavez Foundation. Okay, so that was a very blurry letter, but for you to view this in our in our page at the Restorative Justice for the Arts. The letter is uploaded there. It's also uploaded on IG. And we welcome you to read it because it's a very inspiring letter. And it's humbling. And it definitely reminds us of a lot of things that we forget, right? A lot of important things that we forget. So it's a very, very, very easy solution. We want our mural back. We want this wall to have Daniel Cervantes's mural and artistic cultural heritage so we, we we that's what we want so i'm happy to hear that a representative from jackie goldberg's office is here and basically um do you want to say something rocio this is rocio rivas from jackie goldberg's office thank you for being here rocio um well it was important that it was important that I be here, and Jackie wanted me to be here because she wanted to let everyone know that we took no part in the decision-making process. 
we just found out about it pretty much the same way um, that you all found out about it. And yes, there were mistakes making, made, made, and we are here um, in support of the community. And we, we want, we will support uh, Daniel, the artist, and whatever he feels is correct. We support him, and we will be following up this um, situation or this issue that uh, we can hopefully. We want it to be a win-win, like everyone else wants it, and then. But we do recognize that some mistakes were made, were made, and we want to rectify that. Thank you. That's great news, right? That's great news. So easy solution. We want them real back. But I'm very honored to have Zender here. And uh, we love Zender. Zender, like as much as we love Daniel Cervantes, I, 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 he, this guy for me is a legend. As well as Daniel, as well as other Chicano artists because our art isn't allowed in fancy galleries. So we grow up falling in love with street art. And the reason I'm in love with art is because of this guy. Come here, Sander. Hello. Hello. I know. Uh, I just want to want to say that. Well, thank you guys. I, they had a vigil for one of my murals in uh, in the parking lot of Avenue 57 in Figueroa, something we did back in 1993. So I've been around Highland Park since 1991. So I've been here for a, quite a long time. I have a mural in Garbanza. I have a mural at Burbank. I used to have a mural at Franklin. Uh, I probably have a lot of other murals in the schools surrounding this council district as well as all 15 council districts in the city of LA. Um, but I am also here to say that I'm here to support 100% uh, restorative justice for the art. I want to let you guys know that we have the website officially up. You can now go to restorativejusticefortheart.com and we will update you not just about this mural but about any mural that happens anywhere in LA, LA County or even in the US that gets bypassed or whitewashed or dismissed without proper protocol. I mean, I am a muralist for the last you know, 40 years, and I understand murals have a lifespan. I understand murals can come and go. I understand buildings get bought and sold. Uh, natural disasters happen. They peel off the wall. Uh, a new era of, of kids come in that want to see, you know, a cat with, with a boom box than, than, a, than a Chicano holding a, a si se puede. I understand that. I work with all the muralists from the streetscapers of the 1970s to the graffiti writers who are up and doing their thing like Retina today. I work with all of them. And I travel nationwide back and forth all over the U.S. also defending murals and also talking to muralists about the importance of art. I just had a gentleman who has a, the, the youth center here said, oh my God, Zender, can you come to our class and talk to the kids, share something, maybe do a workshop with the kids. I'm like, of course, my dedication is for the youth. That's why I love kids. I'm a certified gang intervention worker with gang, gang kids, so I my whole life is given to kids. People say, Zender, how old are you? I don't want to tell you how old I am because kids keep me young at heart. You know, I'm always still working with kids and teenagers out there. so. The other thing that I would love to do, and this is going to be in the future, is we're going to create a foundation for law, for lawyers. We want to create a, a, a fund that we can pull out for laws, because I know that certain laws, I used to work for culture fairs, and we know that culture fairs, nobody moves unless someone complains. Nobody says nothing until there's a letter in, their, in a politician's desk. I mean, that's what happens. That's reality. If everything is smooth and everything looks good, hey, business as usual. But if it's a complaint, whether it's a positive complaint or a, or a negative complaint, then it draws action. And sometimes when somebody, it can happen, somebody doesn't like a mural for whatever reason, the content, maybe it's an anti-skateboarding uh, mural. And then the skateboarders come in and say, we want that mural. And they complain to a council office, then they kind of go, oh, wait, what do we do? We, we stick with the, with the community or do we stick with the, uh, with the skaters? And that's kind of where you have to come in and sort of find a solution that either solves the problem in general or one or the other gets to win or lose. But I know that, that working for the city, that Culture Affairs does whatever it can to support. I used to work for Culture Affairs, and they do whatever they can to get them permitted, to get them grandfathered in. And unfortunately, their, their, their files are so high probably that they're trying to catch up on some of the murals they're getting grandfathered in. 
Uh, I still have a lot of my murals where culture fair is saying, Xander, can you just fill out a form so that we can document that it got grandfathered in because even though it was painted in 1993, we need proof. And I'm like, but I'm going to be in Chicago, I'm going to be in New York. And so I'm like, wow, we, there's got to be an easier way. So me and Brenda talk a lot about this. He said, well, another thing we're going to do is once these murals get either, either we get a beautiful mural with a Cervantes, Cesar Chavez, and a Garbanza community theme jointly, or we get the original mural back, whichever one, we also want to put something that says, if this mural gets damaged, call Restorative Justice for the Arts. We will come in here, take the graffiti, we're not going to charge you. That's what I do. I, and I go to all the schools and say, I'm going to do the I'm going to come in here and say, hey, I want to restore your murals for free. Because I don't want it to come out of your budget because I know there's no budget. So it's my responsibility, it's my mural, and that's what says, I mean, uh, uh, Cervantes says, I'll pay. Cervantes, I'll pay. I'll donate my time. You know, it's not about money. It's about what is right. Let's just do what is right. And to me, this is right. All of us coming together, and, and, and I wish there would be thousands of us right here, but you never know. This is, might be the seed. Brenda might be just planting the seed that, unfortunately, the Mural Conservancy couldn't do. Because I used to work for the Mural Conservancy. And their big problem is, there's too many murals, there's too many artists, how do we do this? And even though they have millions of budget, of millions of dollars a year, it still becomes a, a difficult task. And I think the biggest reason why it's a difficult task is because not one organization can do it all. They need community input. I you to tell them, get letters from the community to confirm that they will be the eyes of that mural, that they will be the protectors. Get a letter saying, this neighbor here, saying, I vow to look at that mural. If anything is written, I out. will call and say, the mural got tagged. Can we bring the artist to restore it? That would be great because I only have, I have about 400 murals in LA and I only maybe out of 400 murals get five calls from five community members. I, I can even mention them. You know, Arizona Meat Market, uh, Little <laughs> Tiffany's on, on Evergreen. Uh, little little murals that they love them so much that if, if they get like a little scratch, they call me like, okay, that's a scratch. I can't do nothing about that. <laughs> you know, but, I, but that's what makes the difference is when we say, hey, that mural's got tagged or that mural needs restoration. Let's all pitch in. And how much does it cost to get paid? It's not about the money. One time I got a grant to do a restoration from the Mural Conservancy, and I said, are you kidding me? This is enough to restore four murals. And she's like, really? Yeah, so I went over to the Fourth Evergreen. I went to the History of Boyle Heights mural. I went and did the Mujeres mural on Fourth on the 4th Street Project. I went and did East LA, and they were like, dude, you're like the first guy that's ever done that. <laughs> Everybody else wants more money. I said, no, no, because it's not about the money. It's about us as a community and it's about the visual arts and it's about all working together to preserve the integrity of our history and our community. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we are, are going to propose, Restorative Justice for the Arts is going to propose that in order to have more protections for our murals, of course our neighborhood lookouts, right? Our community, but also I'm reaching out to the neighborhood council, right? Why not utilize our neighborhood councils so that we can have them monitor our mural rights, our community art rights, right? So let's say somebody didn't want to make this mistake again. So let's just say, wait, what's protocol? Let's call your local neighborhood council, right? Let's talk to them and say, hey, guess what? There's a federal law, BARA, that protects our art. There's also a state law, the California uh, Art Preservation Act of 79, and there's also the DCA, right? Although I'm still trying to find out like the kind of exemptions that LAUSD has, um, it, which do doesn't make sense because they're a public entity, not private, but I'm, I'm, I'm studying that. I'll get to the bottom of it. But regardless, we have federal and state laws that supersede local laws. So we, we have rights and we need to exercise them. So let's get our, our neighborhood councils, right? We're losing a lot of murals in Ball Heights. We're losing a lot of murals in East Los. A lot of community art in all the barrios, in El Sereno, especially the ones that are being gentrified, right? So let's get our neighborhood councils to be involved. Let's get them to help us monitor our rights 
And you know what? If they're not sure, then they can call restorative justice for the art. And you know what? I don't get paid for this. I do it for from my heart. I do it because these murals mean everything to me. My community art. I grew up with this art. And this art is extremely important because we are not allowed in galleries. Our art still, we are the majority in California. Pero no los dejan entrar en the art galleries. What's that all about? You know what I'm saying? Like we that's an injustice in itself. Chicha's working on that. Yeah. So you know, I, I definitely want to encourage everybody. You know, I don't I'm not asking permission. I'm just gonna ask the neighborhood councils, you know what, can you help us out? Because we are community. I'm not funded by politicians. I'm not funded by anybody. I'm funded by people who care about community art. Who are who, who say, you know what? I don't do this for PR. I do it because I know you love the art and I know you're gonna defend it, right? So I try to tell my community what I've learned, to empower ourselves, to exercise those rights. Those are gifts, the federal and the state laws that we have to protect our art, those are gifts. But I'd like to also invite up here Taiji, who I was also involved with in a battle in Little Tokyo, where the artists not only were being displaced, but erased. So, Taiji, would you like to say a few words? Thank you for coming. Hi, uh, thanks for uh, letting us know about what's going on up here. And there's, a, there's several of us here that were part of a, a fight in Little Tokyo about a year and a half ago, where a big developer, backed by the uh, Credit Suisse Bank, bought a historic building in the east side of Little Tokyo Mountain, known as the Arts District. And in that building um, housed uh, archives and a lot of our artists, uh, painting, paintings, uh, over 2,000 square feet, actually, the market actually more like about 5,000 square feet. And uh, that building had served as almost like an unofficial cultural center for a lot of our artists training and um, developing uh, young artists. And it's also some of the most important artists from our community actually live in this building, right? And the developer bought the building, and in the process of them um, dictating our people, they went to this city hall to try to get the building uh, designated as a historical site. And it was a metaphorically the same thing as what they did to this wall right here, right? In the documentation and the argumentation to get the historical uh, uh, designation of that building, that uh, Commission called Cultural, Commission, Cultural Heritage Commission City Hall, they, they cut the history off of the building, and then the history that they did include, which is only prior to 1960, they eliminated any mention of Japanese Americans from that building, even though we've been in that building since before the war. And all of the biggest contributions out of that building from the 60s were all art, mostly art artists. And there was also other uh, Latino artists in there. Uh, so this whole process of, of whitewashing is part and parcel of what's happening in our, in our communities in terms of gentrification and displacement. And it's a, it's a cultural war, right? They're trying to make the neighborhoods more palatable and acceptable to white, racist people. I mean, not even cool white people, right? We all know some cool white people that, are, that, are, that we can trust and hang out with, right? But these people aren't even very nice. I mean, the ones that open up the shops on York, and you know, when people like Kathy Gaya just goes in there, they don't say hello, how are you? It's kind of like, you know, they don't even want you in there. They don't want you to leave the premises. We've all had that experience, right? Um, or you go to some of the restaurants and they wait on the white people before they wait on you. I mean, we've all we've all had that experience. And this, so this culture of whitewashing is part of an ideological cultural Trumpian, if you will, white supremacist um, attack on our communities. And so that's why that's why we came out here because um, we, we understand that it's not just in one community. It's all of our communities. It's the Asian communities that happen in the Crenshaw district by marching at the American district and like uh, Brendan mentioned the whole Heights and place. So citywide it's important for us all to get, uh, come together against this. I think the ideas of educating people about the laws are important. We also need to start developing political candidates that can replace these lackeys on city council who are functioning 
solely in the interest of the developers that are just wasting their community. So let's keep up the fight and uh, keep up the communication and uh, thanks for having us here. Thank you so much. Would you like to say something about that? Okay. So, you know, we, we want to also, you know, we, we want to express our love also in, in Spanish and we have a wonderful community member, Norma Chavez, who, who also, um, her husband is, is part of our community. He's FHN. Hey, once a panther, always a panther. Here, come vente, the Norma. Muchas gracias, amiga, por hablar por nosotros, por la comunidad. Bueno, buenas tardes a todos. Este, como había comentado Brenda, mi nombre es Norma Chávez. Estamos aquí para apoyar a la comunidad. Este, lo que sucedió en este mural es algo muy triste, porque esto es patrimonio cultural, no solamente de la ciudad de Highland Park, este, sino de todos. Cualquier persona que venga a vivir a esta comunidad, que venga a visitar a esta comunidad, esto es parte de la historia de todos. No importa de qué raza sea, es patrimonio cultural de todos. Entonces estamos aquí para apoyar a este esfuerzo. Ojalá que se pueda llegar a un acuerdo este, que todo se pueda resolver de una forma justa y que también este, exponga el caso de, de respeto, ¿no? respeto a los artistas, a la historia, este, a la cultura patrimonial. Este, que sepa la comunidad, ¿eh? que vengan bienvenidos todos, pero eh, debe de haber un respeto. ¿no? Entonces eso es lo, lo importante de todo esto y ojalá que, que se pueda llegar a eso. Gracias, Norma. Muchas gracias. Yeah, you know, I, I, I also would like uh, my friend Joe to come up and talk about his experience and, and his pain that he felt when this mural was erased. Um, he had really wonderful conversations with his family about that, Joe. All right, Nella. Woo! Let me check. Thanks everyone. My name is Joe Delgado. I did grow up in the Highland Park, last of our Northeast community. Um, I'm very proud to say that. I grew up coaching kids from uh, the Parks and Recreation Department, mainly in the swimming, water polo, so I advanced those little kids to uh, compete uh, competitively and taught them, you know, uh, a lot of sports and things like that, and kept them off the streets. So what you see behind you up here, that's kind of what I was a part of, making sure that they weren't in the streets, keeping them busy, uh, you know, active and things like that. So um, when I learned about this particular mural that was whitewashed, it was upsetting. Upsetting because it meant uh, a lot, not only, like Norma says, to the community, and like Brenda has mentioned, but to, uh, to it's, it's a history, a history for, uh, to our culture. And um, when I spoke to the principal, she was very kind and, and you know, she listened. And um, I expressed my concern, my sadness, and, you know, they, I guess we're not aware of what they did by whitewashing this particular mural. So uh, in my conversation with her, you know, I expressed my uh, yet sadness because this uh, particular mural represented a history that my father was a part of. So he was a, a bracero, and he's still alive today. He's, he's fighting, but he's still alive. He's 85 years old, and when we pass by here, you know, he always uh, likes staring at me. Sometimes he'll come on his little chair, and he doesn't see it anymore. So we always had conversations about that. And when it was whitewashed, you know, it was it was just difficult to explain to him what happened or why it happened. So he told me we're trying to draw because it represents history, it represents culture. They fought for, you know, they didn't go to war, but they fought, you know, with their hands, they, they sweat, they bled to help provide food for you, for your family. Okay? And that's why it's important to you know, acknowledge and to reach out and to communicate and, and like Brenda says, there should be a protocol before you decide to whitewash something that means something to the community that still exists here today. Thank you. Okay, I would like to have Paul up. We, you know, we have great, amazing artists here like Paul and, and Andy. And uh, would you like to say something? Yes. Peter. Peter, sorry. Perdón, Peter. I'm so sorry. Peter! <laughs> Okay. Okay. Um, I, the only thing I really want to say is, you know, we've seen art become we've we've seen art become a commodity. That's really anti to what we do, um, and to what all the, the street artists and the, and the graffiti artists do. 
Um, many years ago in the 18th century, there was a white boy. His name was Saint Simon. He was he rebelled against his own um, his own class, and he wrote some stuff that's pretty incredible. He said, and this is why art's so important, not just to our community and culturally, just to us, but to everybody who is involved in the movements. He said, art is our weapon. We are, the artists are the avant-garde for change. We do not like convention. The only way we can have real change is through the arts. So the writers, the visual artists, um, uh, the poets, all the arts, all the arts are the avant-garde. That's what we need and that's why this is so important. So my hat's off to and everybody who's working this, all the artists that, that, that work to do this, and especially the street artists, that people understand. Enough of all this art that people don't understand, the stuff that's in the museums that all the people go to and spend money to see. Um, you know, we need to, we need the stuff that's changing that is truly transformative. Word I don't like anymore because it doesn't mean anything. That really changes people, that really changes people's hearts. That's what I'm about. That's what I think everybody hears about. That's all I want to say. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. That is so true. There, we see a lot of politicians and a lot of superpowers uh, weaponizing our art and using it against us. So that has to stop. But um, Andy is here too. And let me tell you how I met Andy. Andy's a, uh, wow. Like, I went to uh, downtown to go, uh, you know, hear this. Uh, uh, over there in Temple, here people speak out against this displacement at 800 Traction. And I was amazed at how passionate Andy was and how she didn't allow them <laughs> to shut her up even after two minutes. And the, the police officer came to her and she goes, What? You didn't arrest me? Arrest me then. And he didn't arrest her. So I, Andy, come, come up here, man. And then, and this an amazing artist. She's on Instagram. You should follow her. <laughs> Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Andrea, and uh, uh, yeah, right there. Uh, okay. Uh, um, I wasn't always an activist. Uh, I was always an artist, and as I became more politically aware of. Uh, of just uh, working class struggles and, and poverty and social inequalities, uh, I began to, to use my artwork to address those issues more and more. Uh, and uh, if you have time, check out my stuff. But um, I, I, and I have since then, uh, joining individuals like Brenda and Taiji. David Mark uh, and the whole uh, process of 800 Traction become much more aware and I'm very grateful for that because uh, like Peter said, we can uh, use this medium for change instead of uh, using it to, uh, uh, or allowing it to become co-opted against us. So yeah, thank you for um, standing up for what's right. Thank you. <laughs> So we're also very honored to have David Bloom here. I'm a big fan of David Bloom because he stands up for our veteranos, right? Nobody stands up for our veterans, and we have Veterans Day coming up. Come on, come on, David. And he also writes uh, stories when nobody wants to pick them up, like the East Side or, or, or these local LA Times or New York with like say all kinds of shit lies about how cool this place is. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not true. So we have somebody here we can rely, a neighbor that's also a, a, a mural out, lookout, right? He, he, seen, he saw this mural disappear right before his eyes. And so he's here to not just tell us the importance of this, but also how important it is to honor our veterans, just like, just like it is important to honor our farm workers, right? Our migrant farm workers and these people who struggle and bleed to get food and, and, and on the table and, and our freedom, right? David Brown, thank you. Thank you. I didn't expect to come up here, but you, you mentioned something really good, and the neighborhood council office should be someplace you could go to if you see something that's, or they should have been able to call them right away and you should have not come to this. But also, across the street here, there was a very historic uh, mural on this uh, brick 
it had the Southwest Museum there. And I remember I wrote a story that the uh, people who run that church were looking for somebody to restore that mural, but nobody came up and they spray washed it. But it could be a lot more organized. And uh, a lot of us here worked hard with the Veterans Memorial at York and Figueroa. They wanted to take out the water fountain. They wanted to put dirt in there and plant plants and act like the homeless weren't just going to throw that away or the people who unfortunately don't have a place to live. But uh, people will see when you prove something, people respect it. Even the people who were staying there aren't back yet. And I live right across the street. I saw that this mural this the very next day. And I'm like, this is terrible. Nobody said anything. And it was great to look at that mural every day. And uh, I do believe in whitewashing uh, our history. Uh, I grew up here since a little child, 50 years old. So uh, I think that's part of our history and I think it should be preserved. And the idea that they have to replace this is ridiculous as it stands right now. Yep. Thank you, thank you. And I want to welcome Don Pisa. Don Pisa <laughs> has been documenting all the injustices in North, not only in Northeast LA, but this guy, Man, I love to raise like your photo pile, dude. Like this guy, like he has yeah. priceless photos. You know what I'm saying? And uh, uh, it's an honor to have you here, John. Hey, John. Hello. <laughs> um, thanks, Brenda. Thanks for the surprise. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, I've been documenting gentrification as it happens across the city, mostly in the Northeast. Uh, this is how it happens. It, it, you know, there's a point where where it happens just suddenly, and then everything changes all of a sudden. Like you saw it on, on Figueroa. One summer, we lost 20 businesses because five buildings sold, and they were gone. Um, six months on York Boulevard. One one six month period, it was just a corner on Avenue 50, and then it spread to Avenue 52, and all those businesses changed over. Um, and it happened suddenly like that. But this is. This is the point of why we're here, is because we don't want to be erased. We're here. Uh, the sad truth is, though, I just saw a statistic the other day on uh, the population. Highland Park used to have, population is a zip code, Highland Park used to have about 72,000 people living here. It's now at 63,000. The people that are missing are those families. We, we, we've calculated, in another study we calculated, We've lost about 24,000 people in the community um, due to gentrification. A forced migration out of the community because they can no longer afford to stay here. Um, you see it in the schools. Uh, I was at uh, Lincoln High this morning and they were telling me how their population has dropped from 3,000 to I think 2,000. And so they lose teachers every time they lose, every time they lose the population, their, their enrollment goes down, they lose teachers. Well, that enrollment also translates to the community. They're losing people left and right. And this is just the next step of erasure, is taking out the murals, taking out the culture, taking out any idea of who we are. Um, you could see it even in the, uh, in the um, institutional kind of wayfinding things that you see on Figueroa, those, um, historic markers that have a story on there. Have you seen those? Where's the Latino population that was there? That was here. They contributed in the 70s. Um, the art collectives that were here, that were, that were um, you know, it, not just, they go, be, go before the muralists. There were art collectives here doing all kinds of, uh, of, of uh, community work. There was a collective on uh, off Figueroa called La Generación, which, um, did a lot of community outreach. So, where's their history? Where's our history in that? In, the, in, in that? In their institutional version of history? Um, this is it. It's the murals, and they just whitewashed it. So, this is what we have to watch for. This is what the things that we need to like, kind of uh, keep abreast. We need to get control of the law because the law determines how we can criminalize who they think don't belong here. And so controlling that, controlling, uh, we've had a councilman, sorry, I'm going to go there. Go, <laughs> go there, there, go there, <laughs> go there. We've had a councilman who's supported 
luxury housing for the last five years, and then just recently today, or not recently today, uh, Wednesday it was, signed the bill for um, uh, stopping uh, a moratorium on evictions, which, which we just had. We've been fighting for that for five years, and they just wow. signed it. Um, yet all that during that time, he was supporting luxury housing on Avenue 50 and Avenue uh, on Echo Street. Um, so we need to we need to get control of the law again, because this is our community. And it starts, it starts there, it starts in the neighborhood council, um, it starts in groups like nobody realizes this, but it also starts in the historic preservation overlay zone. They could have stopped some of these projects because they're the one legislative body that's close enough to the community um, to stop it. You can go to the neighborhood council, but they're just a kind of, they're just a rubber stamp in a sense. They say they're, they're a community voice, but they have no legislative power. So we need to take back these institutions. We need to go to the planning department. There's a huge movement against the planning department right now because they're still approving projects that shouldn't be built that aren't, you know, for the people. They're for luxury housing. When you look at the history of the planning department, it was and, and the zoning department and building the city. They all started back in the I forgot the year, but it was basically their idea was, well, let's consult with the developers first and see how they want to do it, and then we'll build our codes around that. That's, that's the foundation of our um, city planning department. So we need to change it, we need to take that back. Those are, those are some big issues because right now, we see on the other side of this, uh, on Figaro, the housing project that's going on there. You'll never guess who owns that one. Who? Say it. Good question. <laughs> uh, does anybody remember Galena Wasserman? from the Marmion Way Apartments. Oh! Boo, boo. yeah. <laughs> so she bought this property about the same time as she bought the Marmion Apartments. The Marmion Apartments, if you recall, 57 families were evicted from that building so she could raise the rents and um, basically take the place over. They fought for a year. They lost. Um, they were they lost the fight to stay, but they won eight months of rent because they were on rent strike that time. Unfortunately, five families ended up homeless in that building, um, and uh, it just it's it, and anyway. So she buys those two properties, and now she's developing these, I believe, 24 homes, which are going to be valued at around eight hundred thousand dollars a piece, right across the street from Burbank Junior High. So um, that project should have been challenged. There was nobody here to challenge that. We can still challenge it later when they when they start to try to rent the place or sell the place. But right now it's been built. So how can we get it back? How can we get it back to affordable housing? Um, I don't know. I, after that, I'm just going to pick on Savito. So I'm going to quit right now while I'm ahead. <laughs> What saddens me today is like is, is your, their, the displacement of our culture. You know, they're, they're erasing of all our murals. You know, when I was a kid, I looked up to that. It was something to look forward to, you know, being an artist. I'm a visual artist. But just seeing the murals, it's like our culture, you know, um, being proud of where our, you know, our, our people came from. You know, it's our, it's our culture, you know, it's everything to us. And it's like just by them, by them erasing it, it just saddens me to this day. You know, it's just, um, it's like they're trying to just erase this permanent. You know, driving up the ramp. You know, I can't afford a home on here. You know, who, who, who has 700000 for a house? You know, it's so expensive out here to live out here. It's ridiculous. Right. Especially on York. Especially on York, there's so many bars. Like, like you know, what is, what is that showing for our youth? 
I'm a parent. I have a daughter. You know, but just walking down York the other day, you know, I was just walking down there. I posted right there too for the Art Block show. And I stopped doing it because I didn't like it. Because of the, the people that walk by there, like, you know, just, I'm not trying to stop to somebody that's trying to get rid of my people. You know? And it's just, it sucks, you know? You know, I grew up right here and I'm, I'm, I'm very prideful from where I come from. You know, like, and I was born and raised in Cypress Park. And it's happening right there too. They're bringing a brewery right there. We're trying to stop that. You know, they're bringing a brewery so close to a, an elementary school that I went to. You know, and it just, it's just right here as well. Like, like you know, for them, taking away our mural right here of Denga Cervantes, it's like, you know, what message are they putting out there for us? But if we don't structure ourselves, if we don't organize, if we don't stand up for our rights, for our cultural rights, it's going to keep happening. So we have to put a stop to it. That's all I gotta say. Thank you. You know, I don't know your name, but thank you for supporting us. What's your name? Frankie. Frankie! Frankie! Come here! Frankie! Man, get up here, Frankie! This is the first time I meet Frankie, but we've been emailing each other back and forth. Hi! Oh my god! Come over here! This woman here, my hero right here. Arts in the house. Here you go. Yay! Let's give her a warm welcome! She's just started OxyArts, and I, this is the first time I see her. <laughs> <laughs> hey everybody, um, I also have a long history in this area. I went to Eagle Rock Elementary and Middle School. Yeah! I love it. Hey, hey, we love you, hey! We love you, hey! Not exactly on part, but close by. Um, I left LA for about 10 years, moved back, and this whole area was completely different. Like a whole new city. I mean, all of LA, but this area is pretty good. So, what I really want to share with everyone tonight is just like, I want to offer. Ways that Occidental can be a support for these kinds of projects. Um, I know some of the folks here have already been involved with this, but we're doing an oral history project to collect these stories and to have an institutional support to kind of fight this institutional erasure that's happening on other, other levels. So that's a very small part of this conversation, but I want people to know about that. Um, and please reach out to me. We want to host more events in our space and really make space for these conversations on the level. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, I want to thank Oxy Arts for definitely being here, and, and they've been very supportive, very supportive. Oxy Arts has been there, they've collected our stories, and that's important because if we don't write about what's happening, if we don't have people like John and, and Adrian and, and all of our community documenting what's going on, it's never going to be told. It's never going to be told. So we have to keep doing this. We have to keep showing up. This is definitely community empowerment. And the fact that the Cesar Chavez Foundation wrote a letter in our community support is extremely important. It's extremely important. And the fact that, you know, people like Frankly and, uh, Frankie and Oxy Arts and, and how they're, they're, they're interested in our stories is extremely important. So that's exactly what Restorative Justice for the Arts wants. We want to be involved with the community. We want to be boots on the ground, right? This is a grassroots organization. And that's why we don't play ball, right? So we see other entities that rely on money from our council members and from other organizations. And guess what happens? They can't, they can't come here. They can't come because they're like, oh, if they see me, they're not going to give me funding. And that's bullshit. Sorry, BS, right? That is that's that is why we are experiencing what we are experiencing. Because there's no connection. There is no longer any connection to the community. Zero. And this is why I took it upon myself and said, you know what? I don't need your money. I don't need your money. I don't need your money because I don't play. I don't play ball. And that's exactly what we have to do. We can no longer play sides because our communities are being erased. Our communities are no longer going to be here. So this empowerment is extremely important. I'm a simple human being, and I got support from Paul Chavez. Like, goodbye. These people were so nice. I mean, unbureaucratic. I mean, no. No BS, like it was so beautiful for them to say, you know what, let's hear you out, 
yes, we support you. Because there's an issue of morality here. It's not an issue of who's wrong or right. What was erased, that's shameless, it's immoral. That's that's something that we can no, we can no longer have happen. So we, like I said, as a community have to come together and do things like John was saying. You know, nobody spoke up against this woman who, on Marmion Way, who displaced children with autism, children with disabilities, children who were, ex who were living in extreme poverty and, and, and had no heart and just displaced them. And so now we've learned she has another building here she across has. the street. And that, that's something that we have to do. We have to come together. Tenemos que unirnos, ¿verdad? El, el pueblo unido jamás será vencido. Y, y, esto, y, y nuestros niños tienen que ver nuestra historia. Tienen que ver nuestro patrimonio y el orgullo que tenemos para estas imágenes, para nuestra cultura. No nomás nuestra cultura, pero que todas las culturas sean importantes, ¿verdad? No nomás mi, la mía, pero de todas nuestras culturas. Porque es importante, nuestro patrimonio es algo que es oro. So we have to stand up together. And if you guys are, you know, you guys have a great idea, shoot it out. You know, I have a Gmail, restorative, restorative is for the arts at gmail.com. You know, if you have this great idea, you know, send it through. Like right now, we're piloting, piloting you know, a neighborhood council to, to take action, to take pictures of all of their murals in their in their neighborhood area and register them, right? So if they find that they get erased, then we can take action, right? So we need to start being lookouts for our murals, for our families, because I call them family members. <laughs> our murals are our family, our art, our community art is our family. So, you know, I want to thank everybody for, for coming out. Um, I was given permission by Daniel Cervantes to speak for him. Unfortunately, Daniel Cervantes couldn't be here tonight because, you know, his, his father's a little ill. And, you know, we all have really, you know, we have problems. We, we, we have, we have, you know, besides all of our daily grinds, we have things, you know, and family members to attend to. So I said, don't worry, Daniel. So Daniel wants you guys to know that he stands in solidarity with the community. And that when he came to meet with Garmanza and, and, and the new artist, there in this image there was no culture. There was nothing, no, no, nothing in regards to culture or cultural heritage. Um, so Daniel Cervantes did not accept the image. So he's going to work on one and he's going to make sure, a new one, and he's going to make sure that it has Cesar Chavez <laughs> and our beloved migrant farm workers and of course the land the land that is so loved we love our land right we love our land and, and we show it we, our our sacrifices and, and our pride in, in 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 our culture and our people so we we are going the next step is he's going to provide a new design and this design is definitely going to have cultural um, images of you know uh, uh, Cesar Chavez and the migrant workers. So we're waiting that right now. And the good news is that, you know, Jackie Goldberg's representative was here and basically said that they support the artists. So that's really good news, right? That's real good progress. I mean, we're not here to, 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 to I'm not here to fight. I'm, I'm here to say, you know, this is a very simple solution. The solution is we, we want our mural back. That's simple. It's simple. And so now that we have that support and we have the support of Cesar Chavez, you know, we are definitely going to push for having our mural restored. Right? So Daniel Cervantes is, is very happy to have you support him. He's very sad that he couldn't be here, but he's definitely going to keep us update, you know, updated. And um, now that we see that, you know, our community is working together and have become more empowered, I don't think that seeing our uh, mural restored is, 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 is far, right? Far, far, far from not. So, you know, I want to thank everybody. I want to thank the parents. I want to thank Muchas Gracias for the team. Estamos muy, 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 uh, que nos vinieron a hoy a apoyarnos. Nosotros 
<laughs> Thank you so much. See, here we have the kids talking about how we want our meal back. Thank you again. Muchas gracias por venir todos. Gracias. Thank you so much. Thank you. What should we do with the candles? Thank you. You can give them back to me. <laughs>